Okay, so I, I, I guess I want to start by um, thanking the, the organizers for a really kind of uh, upbeat, uh, exhilarating, uh, and exciting conference. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about string theory, the, the past, the present, and the future. And I'm going to start with the past, even though now that I've got the uh, flipper the right side up. And uh, the first thing I want to say, you know, going back to the modern era of string theory, the last 30 years, is that we have really done quite an astonishing amount. If you look at this list, which could have gone on for several pages and could fill uh, several hours, it's really uh, quite incredible. So the modern era, I guess when the modern era started, uh, we'd already had the perturbative, you know, in the mid-80s, we'd already had the fact that string theory solved this really deep and enduring problem of the perturbative reconciliation of quantum mechanics and gravity. We'd also, at that time, found a paradigm for unifying all the particles and forces. That is, the idea that all the particles and forces of nature can be unified under one roof under one principle. And this is an idea that the great Einstein didn't even dream of. He didn't even imagine such a wonderful thing. His great vision was to unify gravity and, and electromagnetism. Now, we haven't shown that nature is like this, but we've, we've understood how it's, it's possible. We've solved important problems in, 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 in other, from other fields, like understanding the entropy of a black hole, as Greg uh, just reviewed, we've not only helped along mathematicians in problems that they found important and interesting for their own reasons before we had something to say about them, but we've inspired new questions in mathematics that are, that are interesting new questions that, that people are, are working on. Now, this is a, a big and important one. Um, we're not sure about how string theory fits into nature, but we know very concretely that quantum field theory is part of nature. And so we want to understand quantum field theory. And before the modern era of string theory, we had a Wilsonian picture of quantum field theory where you start with anything up in the ultraviolet. And of course, it's a completely correct picture, but uh, and, and you flow down to the infrared and you talk about uh, in infrared fixed points and so on. Of course, a completely correct picture, but there is far more riches than were imagined in the 70s. Um, and almost all of this came out of studies in, in string theory. So uh, in ADS-CFT, of course, we've solved the large end limit of a, a problem posed by field theorists solving the large end limit, not of all gauge theories, not of QCD, but of, of certain gauge theories. And that's not to mention the incredible work on the richness of supersymmetric field theories and their dualities and this whole beautiful uh, network and, and, and chain of ideas, all of which I am crediting string theory in the broadest possible term by which I mean everything that anybody in this wor room works on or any of their friends works on. <laughs> That's what string theory is. In fact, there aren't really real string theory talks at these conferences anymore. Well, there's usually a few. But, um, and I should have added here, uh, not just quantum field theory, which is one of the pillars of, of 20th century physics, has been rewritten by influence from string theory, but also general relativity. It's incredible, you know, in the last, uh, in the last 10 years, things like black rings that people had not, you know, had not far outside the ideas that uh, traditional general relativists had, and there are all kinds of new connections, new solutions, higher dimensions, many things that we've learned about um, the Einstein equation uh, from thinking about string theory. We've had significant impact on other areas, uh, condensed matter, 
physics, the, the, the long-lived states at, at RIC. And then the most interesting thing is a little bit hard to describe, but we've got this incredible, you know, these glimpses of something really, really revolutionary that space-time is whole. I mean, we can, nobody can say it in a coherent way. We don't know how it all fits together, but, but there is something, you know, we are going to learn. We feel that we are, we are on the path to learning something about the nature of, of, of space and time and quantum mechanics, and we feel we've got a piece of it. Um, and I can't say it in a, a more coherent way than what I've said here because we don't understand it. And the fact that we don't understand it is what's so exciting. It means that there's plenty of room for everybody, plenty of work for everybody in this room and all your friends to keep us busy for, for, for quite some time. So I think I have found this conference very uh, exciting. Uh, because there isn't one dominant theme, but there are many, many interesting themes, many things being explored, all of which um, look, look uh, promising. And the interesting time to be a physics, physicist is when you have things that you don't understand, and we are very rich in those. And um, people talk nostalgically about the beginning of the 20th century you know, 1910, 1920, that that was the great time to be a physicist. But I believe that in a century from now, they will be saying to only to have been a physicist in 2014. <laughs> we knew something was coming. It was going to be fantastic. We could see it. We don't know what it is. And we've got this uh, fantastic group of colleagues to, to, to try and understand it. And we're not just, you know, sitting around uh, scratching our heads, we all have notebooks full of papers and we're working on things and those projects have demonstrably uh, moved us forward. And I'm quoting so Shelley Glashow here, it's not clear where you're going, but it's clear you're going somewhere. And there was another quote that Robert attributed to, to somebody who he didn't name, so I won't name, but we all know who it is, which is, I have to say you guys are having a lot of fun. <laughs> and, um, you know, when Magellan uh, sailed around the world, and when he went past the Cape Virgin in South America, and he didn't know what was next. He didn't know if he was gonna sail over the edge of the world. He didn't know whether it would be many years. He, he didn't know what was gonna happen. But he went past the Cape Virgin, and he went up that, that strait, now called the Strait of Magellan, and he tasted the water. And everybody tasted the water, and the water had some salt in it. And there was no denying the taste of the water that there was salt in it, and there was, there was something on the other side. But they didn't know whether it was a little Mediterranean Ocean, or it was a 5,000-mile Pacific Ocean, or a 50,000-mile ocean, but they had tasted the salt and they knew something was there. And I think everybody in this room has tasted the salt and know, knows about as much about what is going to happen as Magellan knew when he was, was uh, going, going through that strait. Now, we're physicists, so I want to say a word about experiment. So it's my opinion, and one of the good things about this field is that people have different op opinions and they should all be explored. But it's my opinion that it's really unlikely that string theory is going to make some prediction for accelerator physics, either the LHC or the next LHC, uh, the, next, uh, the next accelerator. And that, I wish I could say otherwise, but that's how it looks to me. And that enterprise, which is a respectable and significant fraction of our field, I would not like to see, to see be the defining feature of our field, or for that, that to be the, the standard against uh, which, which we are measured. At the same time, there are many different kinds of experiments. We don't know what's around the strait, 
And um, I think that uh, BICEP2, the recent uh, BICEP2 results, dusty bumps in the road notwithstanding, have vividly reminded us that quantum gravity is an experimental science. And we are having a scientific discussion about whether or not quantum fluctuations of the metric, which are the essence of quantum gravity, are observable. And that is very, very exciting and uh, something that people said would never happen uh, in, 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 my, in my lifetime. And I want to uh, quote John Kovacs here. It is a mistake in science to imagine that you ever know the limits to what we can see. There are no limits to what we can understand. There are no limits that what, to, to what we can see. And um, I, th I think we will solve all of these problems eventually. Now, the future. This is supposed to be a vision talk, and I'm supposed to give my vision of the future. My vision of the future stops about two-thirds of the way through my next paper. So, so you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Hilbert. I'm not, I'm not hoping to present um, some, some, um, some set of, of, of great problems here that uh, everybody could go back in 100 years and say how visionary I was. Uh, in fact, I think if I did, they would uh, go back in five years and say what an idiot I was. <laughs> so, so, but, um, but as a community, of course, we're, we're not only Hilbert, we're much more than Hilbert. You know, our vision of, of as a community is, is, uh, is, is fantastic, and it's not measured by what we can see. It's not measured by some kind of final theory of everything. And also, if you had, I didn't mention this on the first transparency, but if you had looked at that set of accomplishments, of wonderful accomplishments of string theory, nobody would have made that list in 1984 or 85. It would have looked silly. It would have looked overambitious. It would have looked impossible. And uh, so I'm not going to try uh, to, to make, a, make a list of what might happen in the future. What's much more interesting, you know, the, the vitality of our field is not our vision of a final theory of everything, but it's what we have now in the palm of our hands, the problems that we can work on now, and maybe the bigger ones that we might hope to solve in the next uh, five or, or 10 years. So I've had a really wonderful week this week because um, I decided to just, uh, as, as many of you know, I decided to just send out a mailing, a lit, a, an email to all the speakers and organizers, there's about 100 on the list, of what they thought was a good problem for the next uh, that might be solved in the next five or, or, or ten years. And if you're ever feeling, and it's a fantastic list, I'm, about to, I'm not going to go through, all, I sent out a hundred, I got back 80 responses, some of them were a little too late to get uh, on here. Um, so I will go through them now in the two minutes that, that John, <laughs> that, 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 that John is, uh, it has given me. Oh, my personal favorite question is understanding the universal microscopic origin of this formula. It relates statistical mechanics with gravity and quantum mechanics. It's a universal formula. There's a number there, a one quarter, so we know if we've understood it. And we really don't, we really don't understand it, and I think we can't understand it without learning something new very new. But there are many questions here, and I'm going to put them on. I guess there'll be some website for the conference, and I'll update it with the ones that were uh, sent uh, later. But there are, uh, you know, I read all these questions, and, you know, if anybody is wondering what to work on, here are 75 fantastic questions. So just there's a couple here. Let's see. So, you know, we have been talking for 30 years 
about what is the basic symmetry of string theory. What, is, what, is, what are the infinite dimensional symmetries of, 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 of string theory? And now with higher spin gravity and some this connection at high energies, it looks like we, that, could, that wouldn't be outrageous to answer that. Turbulence. You know, turbulence is showing up all over the place in, in, in string theory and various fluid gravity correspondences. We should be able to use all our fantastic tools to say something about, about turbulence. Uh, here's Hiroshi's question. Um, you know, we used to, you know, Wilson taught us that there was this kind of absolute, in quantum field theory, this kind of real separation between UV and IR. But we're learning now that the IR knows much more about the UV than you might have thought. And maybe we can use IR principles to derive string theory or to, uh, you know, how far can we get uh, in, 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 in that direction. Um, so, and also uh, the, the, the hints are supplied. So, um, so I'm gonna make this, this, this list of, of questions available. Uh, okay, so here's my conclusion. Um, we're all part of a grand adventure. It's really the grandest adventure that there ever was. And I think we are all incredibly privileged to, be, to have a life in which we uh, probe these, these deep questions. And, and once in a while, we get little pieces of, of, of the answer. So I, I wanna thank you all for, for being part of this wonderful community and being on this wonderful adventure together. Thank you.